Hello, my name's Peter Frankopan. I'm here in lockdown and I'm spending a lot of time thinking about five big questions. The first is the question of what's happening in the world right now and how is that being affected by coronavirus um, and COVID-19. Even before the virus was detected, the rivalry between China and the United States, not just at an economic, but also at a political and a military level, was rising very quickly. And COVID has provided a context for these antagonisms to sharpen and to accelerate. So I'm spending a lot of time thinking about where those are going to lead and what the world is going to look like uh, as we eventually, if we do get, start getting back to normal. I'm trying to work out how that's going to affect the Belt and Road Initiative, how it's going to affect the prices of oil and energy, uh, but also how South Asia, Southeast Asia, countries along the Silk Roads in Iran, the Middle East uh, and Russia are consolidating their relationships in many cases with China and what that will mean for us at a policy level. Second, I'm trying to understand what this means at a nuts and bolts level. There's been a lot of discussion about reshoring of jobs, about collapsing um, supply chains, and what this is going to mean for businesses uh, in whatever sector is going to be profoundly important. The decisions made as a result of those policy decisions that are being made, some of them in the heat of a very difficult global situation, try to see what the consequences are going to be. The third, I'm looking at some of the mega trends that can easily fall between the cracks, trying to see some of the changes to human behaviour, to social behaviour and to economic behaviour that will be spurred by uh, coronavirus. In particular, things like climate, things like office use, but also even in the way in which we live and communicate with each other are something which I think are very important to tease out and to think about very carefully. The way in which we listen to music is changing, the types of downloads and streams that, that people are listening to uh, online are, are, are cha part of a, a sharply changing behavioural patterns that have been triggered by coronavirus. And the long-term impacts on things like education are going to be profound. So spending a lot of time working and thinking about those. Uh, the fourth one is trying to ask some of the bigger questions that coronavirus, I think, makes us think about. Uh, the United States, for example, spends about $80 billion a year on gathering intelligence from around the world. And yet, despite that enormous resource, it was completely caught by surprise, not only by the outbreak of a, of a disease when it was first identified in Wuhan, but then in working out how to respond to it. And as a historian, trying to see how um, fragile, well-organised, well-run, competent states can be, and how um, collapse and fragility can be exacerbated by small individual events, I think is something that um, both historians and businesses and states can learn a lot from. So trying to think about some of the issues around complexity, around um, future gazing, and try to work out what threats might suddenly prove immensely destabilising, I think is worth a lot of time too. And on that, the fifth question I'm thinking about is about what history tells us about all of this. So um, some of the things that I've been working on through COVID are very surprising. For example, uh, cities in the, in, in the, that persecuted minorities, and particularly Jews during the Black Death in the 1340s, spread along silk roads, along supply chains, uh, thought to come from abroad, uh, led to a, a sharp rise in xenophobia. Uh, many people who were held responsible for that, like the Jews, were not just persecuted, but in many cases murdered. And in those towns and cities where those murders were most acute, most abrupt, they tended to be places that didn't have large trading facilities, they weren't ports. Um, it's, it's striking that in the 1920s and 1930s, those towns and cities in Germany were six times more likely to, ha to see attacks against Jews. So try to see how some of these long-term trends that don't just span decades or even centuries, but sometimes much, much longer than that, play an important role in shaping the world that we live in. So understanding the past provides a lot of very important clues for what's happening in the present and what is going to come towards us next. So that's one of my favourite expressions and favourite sayings. A king of Zhao in northwestern China, uh, about two and a half thousand years ago, said that the ways of yesterday are no longer appropriate and good enough for the world of today and tomorrow. So in 2020, even without COVID, the question would have been about how do we adapt? How do we learn? How do we prepare for a sharply changing world? In an age where new technologies, new fragilities, new difficulties, but also new opportunities are coming towards us, spending some time to think about why things have happened in the past, where they're taking us today, and what will happen tomorrow is really worth all of our time. Hope to see you soon.